All right, wonderful. We are now starting off. We're continuing. Where we left off last week, we're learning in the book <clears throat> Lakute Torah, which was written by the first Rebbe of Chabad, who is the Mashiach of his generation. He was the Mashiach. And it gives you an idea of what Mashiach is going to do and what we're waiting for. Education. To educate the whole world what God is. Nobody knows what God is. Everybody knows that there could be such a thing as God. But what exactly is God? Nobody. In fact, we even say, there's nothing like our God. All these other nations, even the religions that... <clears throat> claim to replace Judaism. They don't really get what God is. So, all right, so what is God? So the Rebbe says, okay, the main thing with God is, is that he creates the world. That's number one. And he creates us. And he creates us for a purpose. And the purpose is a very, very, how do you say, a live one. And like everything that's alive, it's complicated. Right? A, a dead body is not so complicated. You can touch wherever you want to. It doesn't really harm it or anything like that. You can't make any, many mistakes. But a living person, you stick your finger in his eye, and you can't say, oh, I'm sorry, I thought that was your toe. If, if a dead person is eye and the toe is not a big difference. <laughs> the same thing is, Judaism makes everything alive. So there's some things you can touch and some things you can't touch and some things you must do and something you can't do. And a living person, you know, you can't put food into his ear or whatever because it's not good. A dead person, you want to stick food in his ear for some reason, you don't do it. it's not going to hurt him, right? It's not going to hurt. It might not help, but it sure is not going to hurt. <clears throat> so that's the whole thing, to make everybody laugh. So the Rebbe says like this, let's start off talking about prayer. When we pray to God, God reacts. That's right. God reacts. And that's what King Solomon is trying to tell us in his book, The Song of Songs, that God reacts. It says, Levavati, can we move this? Yeah, a little bit. Here we go. Levavtani, Achotikalav, you have made me love you, my sister, bride. You have made me love you with one of your eyes. Right, what this means, King Solomon, it's, it's all allegory and metaphor. But nevertheless, that's what King Solomon says. We, we make God love us. And so, when a person, I'm just re going over what we did last time. <coughs> when we pray to God, we ask God to reveal himself. So there's two ways that God reveals himself in the world. One way is doing things. Doing things. God heals the sick. God brings the rain. That's what the whole Shemona Esrei we're praying for. God will rebuild Jerusalem. He'll gather up the Jews together. God will raise the dead. God will bring Mashiach and Semach David. Right? God will, all these details of what God does. That's what's called, <clears throat> in the language of Kabbalah, Memali Kaomi, how God fills the world. But then there's something much greater than that. And that is that God reveals himself. And that's called Soviv Kolmi. Namely, that God reveals the fact that there's nothing except for God. All there is is God. What that happens, what happens then? I don't know. But the world is, is wonderful. For sure, all this Mamali Kolmi, this, like at Mount Sinai, all the sick get healed, all the blind see, all the deaf hear, all the mute speak, all the crippled walk. That's for God, so to speak, small stuff. The big thing is that God reveals himself, like it wasn't the Holy of Holies. So that's what the Rebbe says. That's what it means, blessed. One means that God makes blessings. That's what we call God fills the world. In other words, aspects of God's things that God does. And when we say Boruch, we mean that God himself is the source of all blessing. He himself is the ultimate. Himself is the blessing. Huh? So that's this level of soviv ka'omim that God surrounds all the worlds. And that's, I think, what we got up to 
that's the whole topic of Yitzhir Mitzrayim going out of Egypt. Going out of Egypt means God reveals himself. When God reveals himself, what does it mean? That suddenly the world is not so small and limiting. Limiting. Suddenly we realize that we are sons of God. That the world is just a creation. On this level of how God fills the worlds, that God enlivens everybody and God gives eyes and ears. That's only that's called Egypt. That's called limitation. This is how God brings down a chain of creation into the world. All these levels are all limited. The angels and the, the souls. That's all revelations of aspects of God. You want to call it the names of God, the letters of God the lights of God. That's all we call this, how God fills the world. <clears throat> but God himself, I'm shocked to reveal, God himself, that is going out of Egypt. Suddenly we realize that Egypt is not controlling the world. The world does not control us. That suddenly we are connected to the creator of the world. We're in a whole different ballgame. Shu has sharat or in soap. This is the revealing of the light of God, Mamish. Shekamo Kain, Shekamo Shemo, just like God's name, so is he. Ain Sof, no limit. Huh? So in, 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 in a short way, we can say Memali call me, how God fills the world. That's what God does. And how God surrounds the world, that's what God is. And our true identity, especially as Jews, but eventually the whole world, is that everyone will see and feel what God is, not just what he does. We'll feel that we are not just God's creations. These are things that God does. But somehow or other, this world is what God is. The essence of God will be revealed here because the fact is there is nothing except for God. That's the fact. <clears throat> when a person draws on his soul this level it's as though he went out of Egypt suddenly he's a different creation when the Jews were in Egypt they were slaves they had slave identity they were slaves and now they went out of Egypt so they went out of that old slave identity the problem was is that they went into selfishness <coughs> And we haven't gotten out of that yet. But when we do, is we'll realize that all of our misconceptions of the world and all of our limitations and our fears and our doubts and all this, this is all a big mirage. And that's what we're praying for, that God himself should reveal himself. This is like what it says in the end of the Shema, right, in in, in uh, the last paragraph of the Shema, I am God, I shall say to this Minister I am God that took you out of Egypt, and then it says, it says afterwards again, I am God took you out of Egypt, I am God, just one minute, one minute, Hold, let's turn this one second off, one minute, One second. Here we go. Okay, that's going out of Egypt. In other words, a, a, a totally different identity. God himself revealed himself and revealed that the whole world is not something separate from God's self. That's why we say twice, I am God that took you out of Egypt, right? <laughs> In the third chapter of the Shema. I am God that took you out of Egypt. I am God, your God, that took you out of Egypt. And it says again, I am God, your God. Why does it say twice? Let's see. Perish, what does it mean? I am God, your God. This is talking about 
soul of Kalmi, God's essence. And before it becomes Bechinat Hashem, Le Bechinat Elohim. God's essence, before it becomes revealed in the world. I am God, you're God. That's what God is. But <coughs> there's another level. So we've called him how God is in himself. Revealing this godliness into the world. Mamale call me. Okay, what is it something like? Let's say, take an example. A person be he, he's he's not he, he doesn't know he's a Jew. Suddenly you tell him he's a Jew, right? Bali Chuva. The Rebbe has a lot of people like that. All of a sudden the person becomes a Jew. I think I told you the story. There was a fellow that said that he worked, he had a garage in, in New York, and he worked with this Israeli Yemenite guy who was totally not religious, anti-religious, and somehow or other he convinced him to go in front of the Rebbe for dollars. So this Yemenite guy, he was bored, and he heard the Rebbe is a nice person. And so, <laughs> just for the experience. So he went, he had long hair, this Taimani Yemenite Jew, Israeli Jew. Israeli Jew. So he went in front of the Rebbe and the Rebbe gave him a dollar. He looked at him <clears throat> and he didn't even wait for his friend. That's the way I heard the story. He went out first. His friend was looking for him. He saw him across the street, went across the street, went straight to the barber shop, got all of his hair cut off, went next door to buy and he bought a pair of tefillin and he said he's putting on now tefillin. He bought tzitzis. He's putting on tzitzis. He's going to be a religious Jew. What happened? What did the Rebbe do? He has no idea. He has absolutely no idea what the Rebbe did. The Rebbe did not say anything to him. The Rebbe did not make any innuendo. He said, "What you innuendos? What is it?" The Rebbe just gave him a dollar and said, "Blessing and success." That's it. So that means with that's there's sometimes people went by the Rebbe and they said, "You know, my my eyes hurt, my ears hurt, my daughter doesn't get married." This this. So the Rebbe gave a blessing. That's mamali me. Shows you what God can do. But sometimes people went by the Rebbe and, and he showed them what God is, what a Jew is. That's Soviv Kalmim. So there's two aspects of this Soviv Kalmim, how God surrounds all the words. Soviv means surrounds, call all Olmim worlds. <clears throat> it's how it is in itself. And then there is like pure Judaism, as it is pristine, you know, in the Holy of Holies. And then there is how it's revealed in the physical world and everything you do. At once, but like this fellow, you didn't have to convince him. Okay, now cut off your hair. Okay, now buy to fill in. Okay. Havaya lokeinu. This is Soviv Kalmim. This is God in Himself. Havaya lokeinu. This is how God is in Himself. Namely, this is the uniting of what we say, Av Aim, Chachma and Bina, which is drawn down. Soviv Kalmim. This is before it comes down. <clears throat> because Ava Ain, that's Chachma and Bina, they're all so called the concealed ones. They're the, the mysteries. The mysteries belong to God. That's God, so to speak, in Himself before we reveal God in the world. But Gam Chachma, also this level of Chachma and Bina, that's how they are united. They're concealed from us. That's like Soviv Kalmi. And Bina, this is also a surrounding level. But to draw down the Soviv Kalmi, which was represented by Chachman Bina, he says, when it comes into revealed into the Mamali Kalmi, into the physical world, this is called uniting male and female. So what's the Rebbe saying? It ends up that there's going to be three revelations here of God. <clears throat> One revelation of God is Mamali Kalmi, things that God does. Another revelation of God is... <clears throat> That how God takes us out of Egypt, wipes all of Egypt out. Another revelation of God, which is even higher, is how God reveals this essence that wipes everything out, but in every detail of the world. These two ways of drawing God down, this is the true meanings of the word Baruch, blessed. God is blessed or God gives blessings. Zeupirish Kadosh, and it's also the same thing when we call God a Kodesh Borahu. 
the Holy One, blessed be He. Hainu Sobiv Kalamim, this is God in His essence. But when we say Boruch, this is the source of all blessings. <coughs> That's like God being Kodesh, holy. But this is what we call God's crown. How it is found only in the upper worlds, the hidden worlds, Chachman, Bin, etc. But then there's another meaning of Boruch, means how God is drawn down, God's essence, <coughs> into Mamalikalmi, into the details of the world, in a way of Atta, Boruch Atta, so that we can feel the oneness of God here in the world. It's a very interesting thing the Rambam brings also, and we've talked about this a lot of times, that when Mashiach comes, all of the nations, all the other religions the, 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 will be dropped. All the people will realize that all the religions are lies. They are lies. How will they realize that they're lies? Someone's going to come on television and explain it to them? No way. It's not going to happen. You can explain to these people day and night, <clears throat> And they're not going to realize that it's lies. <coughs> the religions give them comfort. The religions give them security. The religions give them spirituality. They give them hope. They give them a framework of life. They give them morals, values, right? Don't kill, don't steal, etc. The things that they borrowed from the Torah. How can it be that all these religions will be wiped out? Why? It says because very simply, when God really reveals himself, then all of a sudden they'll realize how real God is, how friendly God is, how positive, how loving God is, and what they've been missing by not realizing this. How their religions, and listen, you can't blame the religions, they're doing the best they can, but how their religions have been keeping the truth from them. <clears throat> and that's what's called the upper realization of God when everyone sees and feels this upper revelation realization of how good God is that God is creating them and that God is infinitely real and infinitely meaningful and infinitely blessing and blessed then all of a sudden the whole world will be different people will change they'll realize there's an alternative to all of the lies that they've been fed And the alternative is not just an intellectual one. It's a real one. It's a real one. It's like if a person, you know, <clears throat> you have these uh, young kids in Israel <coughs> messing around on Shabbos, smoking cigarettes and watching cellar. All of a sudden, one of these kids, his grandfather comes out of the shoulder, comes out of the, Oy! all of a sudden he gets scared. He puts it away. What are you afraid of your grandfather? He's such a good person. I love him so much. I don't want him to see me smoking cigarettes and doing the. But you like to smoke cigarettes. You like to watch your, your <clears throat> video games or whatever it is. <coughs> what do you care about Shabbos? He says, maybe I don't care about Shabbos, but I care about my grandfather. The same thing is also here. <coughs> People won't care about the religion, but they'll care about God. And God reveals himself through the Torah. That's what's called Soviv Kalmim, the essence of God will be revealed. Maybe we can also say, and this is this is, it all depends on our prayers, our work. That's what we said before. The King Solomon is saying that God, we make God love us, we draw God to us. God reacts to what we do. And this is what now we're just explaining what exactly happens when God reveals himself. And there's Mamalikalmim, there's Sovikalmim, and there's Sovikalmim in Mamalikalmim. <clears throat> so every detail of the world suddenly has a new meaning. After Omar, we can say, <clears throat> that these two types of blessing in the world from what we call Mamalikalmim, how God fills the world, and what God does, and Sovikalmim, what God is, this is also referred to in another type of terminology. Is used in Hasidut. Dat Elyon Vedat Takton. 
Dat elyon means upper reality. Dat takton means lower reality. And these are two ways, two ways of feeling God's reality. One is called the upper reality. Dat means to be real. It's translated knowledge, but it means real. What's real? The upper reality is looking at the world from God's point of view. The lower reality is looking at God from our point of view. <clears throat> that Elion, that that Elion, God's point of view. God looking at the world from God's point of view. This is God joins together these two spiritual aspects as what's called Chachman and Bina. <clears throat> God's what we call wisdom and understanding. That's Dat Elyon. Seeing the world from God's point of view. Dat Takhton means looking at God from our point of view, from the world's point of view. This draws down from Chachman and Bina into the emotions. We look at God from our point of view. So we draw, so to speak, what our understanding of God into our lives. <clears throat> this is like Israel. These are two different types of blessings. Okay, what, what's the Rebbe going at? Offer? What's the Rebbe going at? The Rebbe is trying to explain to us what King Solomon is saying. King Solomon realizes something that we don't realize. King Solomon realizes that God reacts to what we do and that God wants us to reveal him here and that there's different aspects of God complete godliness or piecemeal godliness we can reveal in the world what God does that's mamalik only and what God is and that's why it says twice I am God your God that took you out of Egypt I am God your God these two revelations of God what God is and what God does. And that's why we say Hashem Echad, that God is one. What do you mean that God is one? That all these different relation, revelations and these, there's only one God. This is when God, the essence of God, comes and reveal <clears throat> in Mamalikomim, in every detail of the world. This is what's called the upper unity. I mean, just think about it for one second. At Mount Sinai, so it says that all the, the blind could see, the deaf could hear, the mute could speak, the crippled could walk. Everybody saw God, everybody felt God. These were all aspects of God. <laughs> These are all aspects of God. <clears throat> they saw God himself. That was, they saw what God is, but they couldn't take that. They couldn't take it. It was too much for them. <clears throat> so what happened 40 days later despite all these big miracles because they only saw what God does they didn't internalize what God is so 40 days later they used these eyes that God opened up and ears that God made sensitive and how do you say and, 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 and feet that God used that he could walk and mouths that God made <clears throat> able to speak and they used <coughs> To worship the golden calf. What happened to the essence of God? What happened? That was with Moses. As soon as Moses came down, everybody realized their mistake. They stopped worshiping the golden calf. Moses, Moshe, showed everyone what God is. Not just what God does. What God does did not convince them at all. God was raining down bread from heaven and giving them water from a rock and protecting them. That. As soon as they saw that golden calf, they just went crazy. So that's what this is what it means that God is one. That's what the Jewish people want to reveal the essence of God, like it was on Mount Sinai, but in a permanent way in the physical world, like it was afterwards in all these individual miracles. They felt it was God doing it. That's what we say. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
Hainu, this is what's called the upper unity of God coming into the world. Because when we say in Shema Yisrael, Baruch Shem Kavod Malchut Olam Boed, this is what's called the lower unity of God. And what we want is the lower unity of God is great. You know, God makes the world good and he does all these wonderful things. But that's not the goal. The goal is they should <clears throat> we want to reveal the essence of God, what God is in every detail of the world. And that's the whole thing of the prayers, Keneged Korbanot, the prayers are in the place of the sacrifices. Shechemot, just like the sacrifices are called God's bread. Remember, that was the question we asked. How can the sacrifices be called God's bread? That the sacrifice is what God eats the sacrifices, and he becomes stronger. The same thing is also with prayer. Kriyashma, prayer. It says, Achalti Yorim Divshi. That I ate that I ate my bread with my honey. achila, So to speak, God, we feed God. Lamaila. So to speak, we are feeding God. Achila lamaila. That our prayers, our deeds, our surrender to the Creator, feed kalut nefesh, including our soul in the light of God, which that's the way it is anyway. We just have to link into the truth. Link into what's called God's upper way of looking at the world. Dat Elyon, that's so we call him. This God reacts <coughs> like, like bread. When you eat bread, so it enlivens you. When we give God bread, we do what God wants. We surrender ourselves to him. We become digested, so to speak. Then that makes God more alive, this revelation of Orin Sof in this physical world. Hard to believe, but that's the essence of Judaism. That's the whole idea of the Holy Temple. Making blessings in this world so that we feel the essence of God, what God is in every detail of this world. And we can do it. And that's what we do every time that we pray. If we put our mind to it. Have a good week with Mashiach now. And uh, thank you very much for tuning in. And God willing, next week we'll continue. We have one more paragraph to go, two more paragraphs to go. And then we'll be dancing with Mashiach in the base of Mikdash. Amen. Thank you very much. Shalom. Shavua Tov. Shavua Tov. How are you? How is everything? <laughs>